All right, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to optimize an account in Google Ads and what you should be adjusting inside your campaign for best results. Uh, account optimization really can't be overstated on how important it is. If you don't optimize your account, it's gonna stagnate and die. And uh, that's not anything. That's not something anything anyone wants. So um, it's best to you know continuously optimize and get better and better, as opposed to you know stagnating and slowly declining and letting your advertisers overtake you. So the first thing I look at when it comes to optimizing an account and campaign inside Google is just the overall account strategy and where we're going early on in the account. So bid adjustments are really important early on. Uh, we run. Uh, campaigns for service-based businesses. So this is not e-commerce, what I'm, what I'm recommending. This is service-based businesses, specifically the skilled trades. So think landscaping, pool installation, plumbing, HVAC, stuff like that. So these, these are my recommendations. So finding the correct devices to bid on. So generally we do a lot of phone call leads. You really wanna target and maximize your mobile traffic. So you wanna up that by a certain percentage and reduce or decrease um, adjustments on other platforms such as the PC and the tablet platforms or devices, I should say, and really look at what's performing, where the leads are coming from. Sometimes, you know, computer traffic is almost as valuable or the same as mobile traffic. So we keep it on and we don't get rid of it completely because, you know, the more traffic you can get, the more likely you are, you can, uh, you are to get low cost uh, leads. Uh, but that's very important early on, figuring out what devices are working. Locations are another big thing. If you know a certain city isn't as great as another city, chances are you should reduce your actual uh, bid adjustment for it. And you know, hopefully you can make it profitable in the long run. Uh, other things you can consider are uh, income, age, uh, all these things inside of Google Ads, which you can adjust early on. And like I said, this is important early on. When you switch over to a automated bidding strategy, which we recommend doing. Um, Google does all of this, so you don't really need to worry about it. It's better than a human provided you set it up with the proper data you want to target. Another thing you can also consider is targeting audiences. We like to add a whole bunch of audiences to a list, add it to observation mode, and then a few weeks down the line, see if anything's really sticking. And sometimes there are winners in, you know, in market audiences, and sometimes there's not, but that's always something to uh, look at, even later on in campaigns too. Uh, the next thing is bid strategy. So maximize click is something we love to start off with. Uh, we want to get as much data as possible and essentially steer our account into what we want in terms of leads and the lead quality. We want Google to take all that data and go, okay, this is what essentially winning looks like. And then we hand the reins over to Google once we get a certain amount of uh, leads in the account and Google has enough data to work with. Um, that being said, maximize clicks you have to understand what your maximum CPC is or maximum cost per click is. Uh, if you don't, your account's gonna suffer. So it's very important that you're you're constantly tweaking it. Uh, that being said, bidding strategy, it should be, depending on the account, moved over to a automated bidding strategy like target CPA or maximize conversions and allow Google to take more of the reins. And these are the adjustments you make at the end of month one, month two, uh, to really let Google take over when it comes to these micro adjustments, which it's really good at because it's AI is very powerful. The next thing inside of the account, this relates kind of to the keyword section below, but building out new ad groups. When you have enough data, you can go through your search terms and you can see, okay, these uh, keywords are you know really resonating with our target audience. This is what they're type typing in. Uh, we can build out new group ad groups around that and then target that. As you build up more and more ad groups, your cost per click generally gets lower because Google has more options, it's gonna optimize, and your entire account will see you know, more success and a lower cost per lead, which is great to do. So you should always be building out new ad groups uh, and always trying new stuff. There should always be a percentage of spend allocated to trying new stuff, because if you don't, then there's no way to ensure success over the long run, especially if you think like, there's a, a large percent of percentage of Google search traffic uh, comes from keywords that have never been typed in before. So you always gotta be trying new stuff. You can't just sit on what you have, uh, even though it would be nice to sit on what you have because it doesn't take any effort. The next thing is new keywords. You really have to keep the winners and get rid of the losers on a big scale. That's easier said than done. A lot of people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. But um, really wanna keep the winners and get rid of the losers. I'll get more into this uh, below. 
but that's just a broad overview of the account. Uh, another thing is ensure tracking is working. So I've seen this quite a few times. Someone will change a landing page or you know one of the web pages inside their website isn't working anymore and then the tracking just crashes and you don't, you get no feedback to your account and your account essentially has no way of optimizing especially if it's an automated bidding strategy so depending on how much change is going on outside of your in, or outside of your google ads account so think landing pages of the websites uh it's good to check up on it and make sure it's still working i like to do this on a monthly basis generally because you know our landing pages don't change that much but just to ensure that uh, the landing page is still working, the you know call tracking is still working, all this stuff, very good to make sure it's still working, and uh, that way you're not like left out in the dark because you know like why is my account doing absolutely terrible? It's like oh because your tracking's not working, which uh, not a very good thing to do. <laughs> uh, the next thing is keywords. So the initial keywords are based off guessing essentially and data. So you can look through the keyword planner. I have a whole video on it and essentially walks you through how to find keywords. But that being said, this is based on guessing. Here's a good example of uh, a good guess, but it didn't pay off. We were doing a pool installation campaign. We were running for uh, running keywords under fiberglass, vinyl pools, and then in-ground pool installation. You think, oh, well, you know, you're, the company targets in-ground or fiberglass pools, vinyl pools. That would be a phenomenal keyword, and it's just not. People who are searching fiberglass pools and fi uh, vinyl pools generally were contractors or people who already knew what they wanted and they were just looking for a low price. Uh, th this is not the target audience we wanted to be targeting, so we got rid of those keywords. But it's important to note that keywords are essentially based off <laughs> guesses and data. You want to find, and those keywords inside Google Keyword Planner show that they were good keywords. There was lots of traffic behind it, uh, not terrible amounts of competition, and they look like good guesses or essentially it looked like good keywords and um, unfortunately they didn't pay off but that being said keywords like anything else need to be a b tested essentially figure out your winners get rid of your losers and this can be done once you have enough data so the initial keywords you really don't have any in inside your account data so there's there's no way to really optimize them it's a it's a guess and people like to say like oh well we can guarantee this we can guarantee this you can't it's a guess so later on, once you have enough data, and this depends on how much traffic you're getting, um, optimizing the keywords can be done by essentially adding new ad groups. So say you find a new keyword like um, in-ground pool installation companies near me, that maybe that's a keyword and you want to add it to its own ad group and you want to add you know, its own ad copy. And you think that's a great keyword because of the data you have shows high conversion rate at low cost per you know, click. Um, you can add that to its own ad group. But then say there's keywords you don't like, like um, pool contractors near me. Maybe that's a terrible keyword. Uh, and this is just all hypothetical, by the way. You want to add that to your negative list so you're not popping up for it, even if you're using phrase match. That's very important to note. And one of the things we like to do, we like to keep a percentage of our keywords in phrase match so we always have that ability to expand and continuously optimize and add new ad groups. Because if you only use exact match, chances are it's going to be really difficult to expand. The next thing, uh, like I said before, finding these actual keywords and what are good, what are bad, you have to look through your actual search term settings. So when you click on your, your ad group or campaign, you can actually look through search terms. And essentially what search terms are, are the actual terms being searched for by users on Google. This is something that can pop up under your keywords. So Think if you're using phrase match and you're targeting pool contractors, a search term could be pool contractors near me. And that's the actual word someone searched for. It's They didn't search for pool contractors. They searched for pool contractors near me. Very important to note uh, because sometimes search terms can be a little bit different, but that little difference makes a big uh, gigantic effect later on because then you can expand into different ad groups and ad groups can lower your cost per lead, which is you know phenomenal for expanding and optimizing the account later on. So very important to go through your search terms, find the winners, find the losers. Uh, if a keyword is not performing, generally I like to look at at least 10 clicks. If it's still not, that that's generally enough data to get a feel for it and say like, yeah, this keyword isn't good, get rid of it. If you have one click on a keyword, uh, and keep in mind, there is some intuition on it. If you know that the keyword is not relevant to your campaign, you can get rid of it. You don't got to wait for, you know, 10 clicks, 20 clicks or whatever your decision uh, is. 
um, you can just get rid of it. But that being said, if there's a keyword that you're like, ah, it could be good, it could be bad, I would wait for at least 10 clicks, then make the decision based on the data behind it. Uh, that's a very good way that we go about it. You're not spending a copious amount of money, but you are checking that the keyword is valid or it's not valid. The next thing is ad copy. So ad copy is very important because you want a high click-through rate. High click-through rates generally lead to good ad or high quality scores. High quality scores means you can spend less money per click and then that turns into lower cost per leads. So it's very important to get a high uh, click-through rate with your ads. Uh, this is generally done through message match, which is essentially you want your keyword to align with your actual ad that is showing up. So the ad copy has to be relevant to the keyword, and then that has to be relevant to the actual landing page. So if they're not, uh, you're going to get this, you're going to give the user on Google what's called cognitive dissonance, and they're going to say like, well, I thought I was searching for this and I got this. It doesn't feel right to me. I'm going to go somewhere else. You want everything to line up and look look good. That being said, ads can also need to, uh, ads also need to be rewritten. So always look to one differentiate yourself, keep it simple and give the user what they want. Don't run on and boast about how great your company is. I said this time and time again, but don't say, "Oh, we're number 1, we're the best." Give the user reasons to click on you. We guarantee results. Do you have this problem? We can have a, you know, a technician out today to solve that problem. Give them reasons to click on you. And that that's generally good ad copy. It just speaks to the user. It's like reading their own brain. And they're like, okay, yep, that's what I want. And I can go to that. Uh, generally keep it simple. Don't overthink it too much and just try and try new stuff. Uh, generally, most ad copy is generally losers. You're not going to win every single time. Most of the time you're going to lose, but just keep A-B testing it figure out the winners. Google does a very good job at this of A-B testing for you. So uh, it's not very time intensive, but you do have to write the new ads. Uh, that's very important. Make sure your click-through rate is, we we like at least five to 10%. In between there, you're pretty good. And you know your uh, quality score is gonna be all right. Uh, that being said, we like to optimize it generally, depending on traffic, every one to two weeks. And when we see an ad, we it says like let's say 100 impressions, it's got one click or maybe less than a click. Um, that way, and Google will generally stop running this. By the way, it won't continuously run it. It'll just say, "Yeah, this is a loser. Get rid of it." Uh, you can pause that ad, and then what I would recommend doing is writing a new ad and A/B testing that against the current uh, champion is what we call it in A/B testing. Uh, that being said, the next thing is landing pages. Landing pages are very important for a winning campaign. Some people like using websites. I don't. I like landing pages. They convert better. Um, that's my opinion. <laughs> we see better results with it, so we go with landing pages. Um, when looking at landing pages and optimizing them, you need to keep it simple. Do not overcomplicate anything. The most important rule when it comes to landing pages is don't make the customer think. Uh, that's actually a title of a book by Stephen Krug. Uh, or Krug, I can't pronounce his last name. Excellent book, but don't make the actual customer think. Just give them what they want and a way to contact you or a way to get what they want. That's it. Keep it as simple as possible. Uh, that being said, keep it at one or two calls to action. So maybe getting in contact with you is uh, a phone call or an email inquiry. Don't add your fax. Don't add your address. Don't, don't add all these things. If the person cares about that stuff, they'll call you or email you about it. They're not going to you know, scroll through 37 different ways to contact you. They're gonna get confused when they do this and then they're going to leave because someone else has a simpler solution. So don't do that. Uh, another thing when A-B testing landing pages, you can add the same call to action multiple times throughout the landing pages and that may help conversion rates just because people don't have to scroll back up, but don't add different calls to actions. Don't say like, uh, call me emergency you know, like don't have five different phone numbers have one phone number and then have maybe have it placed you know one time at the top right when they get to you one time in the middle and then one time right at the bottom and keep it simple don't do anything um, crazy don't add crazy amounts of calls to actions it's going to hurt your um, conversion rate sub uh, substantially the next thing is testing headlines so headlines are essentially 80 percent of the value, I believe David Ogilvy has a good quote on that, that 80%, you spend 80% of your advertising budget on head, uh, headlines because 80% of people look at the headlines. Um, 
compared to actually reading your paragraph or your body um, copy. So it's very important to get the right headline and to really resonate with the consumer. And you want the headline to be very similar to the ad. Don't make those two things differently. When someone clicks on your ad, make sure the landing page looks a lot like the ad. Don't make these two things very different. Um, under that, you generally have your main points on what you have to offer, how you fix things. Uh, so it could be 100% guarantee. We can have text uh, there within the day, 24 seven service. Give them reasons, again, why to buy. Don't boast about yourself. And you can change these up, test the headlines, test the main points, and see which ones work better. Some headlines work awfully. Some ones work phenomenally. So you know, always be A-B testing that. Uh, very, very important to get correct on your landing page. Uh, another thing I like to do is move sections around on your landing page. So think about you have your main section, which is essentially your heading, your main points, your calls to action, maybe like a picture over here. But below that, maybe you have social proof. Maybe you have your gallery of all of your work, stuff like that. You can move these things. I, I don't recommend moving the main portion around, but if you want to change up your social proof, your gallery, move it around the page, see if it gets any better results, you absolutely can. Um, that being said, social proof is very important. And one of the ways I like to use social proof is say we have a pool installation company. We would love to go and get their Facebook ads, sorry, Facebook uh, reviews, Facebook or Google reviews, anything that is actually real and it looks real and take a screenshot of that, put that in the landing page because it looks and provides so much more credibility than compared to just, you know, a written uh, testimonial that looks like it, it may or may not be real. And uh, if you can actually get those reviews from another social media platform, it just boasts your um, credibility so much. So these are the four things I go over when optimizing an account inside Google. There's quite a few things you should be doing on a weekly basis, but once you get into the routine of it, it's not that much work. So again, look over the account, make the bid adjustments early on. Always, always, always be picking winning keywords, getting rid of the losing keywords, and looking through that search term report. Very important. The next thing is the ad copy. Always be A-B testing the ad copy. Add new ads in, uh, pause the losers, find the winners, like I normally say. And landing page, keep it simple. One or two calls to actions, and always be A-B testing it with your headlines, with the actual structure of the page itself. And you should have a account that is optimized fairly early on inside its life cycle and will be very successful later on and early on inside the year campaign. So hopefully that answers the question of how to optimize a Google Ads campaign. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. I'd love to answer them. Uh, other than that, you guys have a phenomenal day and take care.